Greetings, Patrick here. I have Cheetah World View. And it's Tuesday. If it's Tuesday, then you know what that time that is. It's library time. Uh, not as a library time, but it's also Tuesday night time. That's right. I'm still sort of recovering from uh, from my misadventures from last week. Uh, so we are here late at night, uh, 8.30 or so. We are watching Jamie Hart do her announcements for the Horror Tuber of the Month. Uh, I and the Cheetah will be, in fact, be rooting for John Grande. We will be going over there to Jamie's channel afterwards and voting for John. That's right, my fellow Steeler boy. That's right. Uh, we got a mighty steel curtain around here. Uh, but you guys aren't here for that. You guys are here for, for movies because, you know, that's how me and the Cheetah roll. Uh, well, before we get that started, I will tell you that I did find one book. Uh, I found one book. I found a Harlan Corbin book. Uh, this is a, uh, a Myron Bolotar book. I mentioned when I read Win. Uh, this is, that Win was spun off this series right here. And there's actually another movie spun off this, uh, the Mickey Bolotar movie, uh, series as well. So he's got three different characters in three different series. Uh, so I got that one. Uh, I will say that the library was busy today. Wow. I, we, we didn't think anybody was going to show up. Uh, there's three of us were there and we were there till like 1120 and the doors open at 12 and we didn't think anybody was going to show up and then bam, everything thing you know, there's like 15 people there. <laughs> so, um, I didn't think it was going to be anything in there because the volunteers finished rather early. Uh, but, uh, I was happy to, to, happy to note that they were actually, uh, had brought some stuff out. So, um, it's much better than last week. Last week I found two movies. Eek. All right. So we're going to go with Blu-rays first and then we'll do some DVDs since I have many more DVDs than Blu-rays. Uh, okay. The first thing I got is, um... This is really strange for me. I got another train documentary, but I got it in a Blu-ray. This is the first Blu-ray I've ever gotten from a from a trains uh, train of a uh, movie a documentary or what have you. And this is about uh, Canadian Pacific's. Uh, I guess they're rebuilding their engines. So, uh, let's see next, I, I upgraded. I upgraded, I had a copy of The Foreigner on DVD, I upgraded it to uh, Blu-ray. This is a fantastic movie. This is Jackie Chan's best movie as far as the actor goes. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Pierce Brosnan's in this as well. He's also excellent. This is not to be missed. Um, and actually, there's more martial arts action right here. Jackie Chan's straight up fighting than probably about 90% of his movies, his other movies. It's a fantastic film. Um, as far as his early, as, I know Jackie Chan did a lot of fighting in his early films, but during his, you know, during his popularity days, you know, the, you know, the uh, the Jackie Strike, you know, the, the Jackie Chan Strikes, the series, the Police Story series, um, the Rush Hour, and all that. This is more uh, martial arts in this movie here than in some of those movies. It's a fantastic movie. Uh, next, I thought I was going to get this as a upgrade. Uh, because I said, okay, I got this movie, I'm going to upgrade it. And it looks like either I, I haven't found my DVD copy yet, which is a, which is a possibility. But I don't think so. Now, now I'm thinking about it. But I did get Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson. And yes, it's an A24 film. Yes. Uh, I thought I was upgrading this, but then I looked and I don't have this in my A24 selection. So... I, mm, this might be a first for me. So, all right. That is it for the Blu-rays. It was very small. Uh, the library did not drop off any movies at all again. Uh, that pretty much is just, we, we, we're going to talk to him next week. We talked among ourselves this week. So next week when we go there, we're going to talk to them about, uh, about putting all the stuff out for us to get first crack at because, I'm basically not paying for anything. Um, I'm not getting anything that I paid for. And some of the other people are starting to feel grumbly about that as well. All right. Uh, off we go. Uh, first thing I got to show you is a documentary from the National Geographic. And, and you guys know I love National Geographic specials. And I got 
inside the Vatican. And it's a snapper case. Never seen a snapper case before. Not for Nat, Nat National Geographic. So what that tells me, it was, uh, it was when I saw that, I knew it was going to be uh, distributed by Warner Brothers. So this is probably pretty old, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, let's see. Next up, I found a copy of the Poseidon Adventure. That's right. Classic, classic entertainment right here. Uh, 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 written by Sterling Siliphant, who is an excellent screenwriter. Wow, he is super, super good. And um, let's see. I want to say this was actually directed by Erwin Allen. I, I want to say this is the very first of his disaster movies. This came out in 1973. And... Um, yeah, and the score was by uh, John John Williams, and it stars uh, Ernest Borgnine, Shelley Winters, Red Buttons, and of course Gene Hackman. Much the replay the the remake that they did of Poseidon called Poseidon oh, doesn't even come close to this. Doesn't even come close. Super, the original so much better. Uh, next up, we found a uh, another movie from Blockbuster, uh, and uh, it's James Patterson Sundays at Tiffany's with Alyssa Milano. I know zero about this movie. I looked at it. The reason I got it for is because Kristen Booth is in it. That's right. <laughs> so Kristen, I had to get it for Kristen. Uh, Kristen Booth is one of my favorite actresses. Uh, she is in the series uh, Signed, Sealed, and Delivered. Uh, which I've talked about many times, and who we've had a guest on. Uh, Crystal Lowell's been on a guest. She was also in that series. But um, uh, Kristen Booth is in this movie as well. So any chance you get a chance to see one of your favorites in a small movie, don't pass it up. Um, so, and you can see they were still charging $15 use for this movie. I know nothing about it. Uh, next up, because I don't think I have a physical copy of this. Um, I don't think I did. Uh, but I found a copy of John John uh, Carpenter's The Thing. A very cool, very, uh, this is older. It has a really cool slip cover on it. And the way that it, the way that it looks, it's DVD. Yeah. So I love this because this is in excellent condition. Very, very well conditioned. This is an older copy too. So uh, the thing. I had the prequel, but I don't think I have the original. Uh, next up, I found a, a little beat up, a little beat up version of it. A little beat up, um, but it's still it's it's, it's a. It's the first movie that I ever saw that had that I saw my first pair of boobs, and my mom my mom was not happy about that. Let me tell you, because this was rated PG, and so we went in a rated PG, and next thing you know, there's Jenny Aguder there, uh, topless, and she was not happy about that. Uh, she said that if that happened again, we are out of there. Uh, but the movie we're talking about is the classic Logan's Run. Uh, of course, this starred uh, Michael York and Jenny Aguder, along with uh, uh, along with uh, Farrah Fawcett Majors, whose uh, popularity was skyrocketing, and it also starred Peter Ustinov. And um, the ending of the movie when they come to meet the old man, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, and this also has yet again has a beautiful performance by one of my favorite actors, and he passed away way too soon. And that is Richard Jordan. Richard Jordan is excellent in this as well. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, we've got a couple of TVs. Um, and one of them is going to be the centerpiece. Uh, what I'm glad to show you I found. And I'm super glad that I did. Uh, first, I'm going to show you this. I got this. I got the first season um, not that long ago uh, of this series. And someone donated again, not the same person, obviously, but somebody donated to it again. The first two seasons were on the shelf, uh, but I already knew I had the first season, but I didn't have the second season of Becker with Ted Danson. 
So, uh, and that stars uh, Ted Danson, of course, with Terry Farrell, uh, Shawnee Smith. Um, this a, I, I remember the show, don't remember watching it. Okay, the last I got, the centerpiece. I thought I grabbed the entire series. I was thinking, did I get like, did I get that lucky again? I came one short. Someone, someone, someone almost went for it, but they came one season short. And that is, I got the first four seasons of Grounded for Life. Now I do remember when this hit on Fox. Uh, I remember it went on Fox, and then they ran it for two years. Uh, they got rid of it, and another na uh, network picked it up for the, uh, for three years after that. So it ran for five years. I got the first four seasons. Uh, this stars Donald Logue, uh, Megan Price, uh, Richard Relly. Uh, uh, I heard this. I've heard this has been. I heard this is a great series. I do remember it got critically acclaimed when it came on, but it just didn't get the the, the ratings that Fox was looking for. Uh, by the end of the second season. So they were going to cancel it. But it got picked up. A lot of these shows that get picked up by another network. They know what the ratings are. But they also know too. That the, the series gets a lot of press. Like this is, this series did. At the time that it came out. It was it got a lot of press. Um, I, I guess from, from my understanding. Because I never saw any of the episodes. I guess what I'm hearing. Is sort of like a in the same vein as Shameless, except that not so quite far left. Uh, I mean, it's not way out there. It's, you know, it's more more centered. But uh, uh, but I hear it's very, very good. And, of course, like I said, Donald Logue is in there, and he's a great actor. Uh, many of us fanboys remember him from the first Blade movie. We're going to be naughty. Uh, and he also did a really nice stint on uh, Law & Order SVU. Uh, among other movies. So I got seasons one, two, three, and four. All right. Um, so not bad considering. I mean, last December we had we had a pretty good, and, and not only that too, but this is also put out by Anchor Bay, which is no longer with us. Anchor Bay is gone. So this is going to be this is far out of print. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, last year we had a pretty good. We had a pretty good December. We were pessimistic because the last week, last week was absolutely desert. But uh, it came back a little bit today. I was pretty impressed with what we got, uh, 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 especially with the grounded for life. That's that's the keeper, um, and of course the thing was also really good because I have not seen that movie in decades. Uh, I saw the prequel. I saw the remake or the prequel, which I really enjoyed. Uh, with uh, Joel Edgerton and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, but I have not seen the original in quite a while. I have a feeling, I have a feeling we're going to be battling about that movie. I might be watching it. We might be uh, finding someone to talk about it with me. I know I could get Cody to do it because this is Cody's favorite movie in the world. Uh, all right, that's it for this uh, haul. Uh, hopefully, you liked it. Let us know how you think that me and the cheetah did this time and. If you were going to watch anything from this this movie uh, movie hunt, what would you watch? Uh, leave it down in the comments. And uh, um, yeah, excited excited for uh, excited for next Tuesday to get here already. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Um, tomorrow night is Wednesday. We'll be talking with Ray Murray from Cinephobia releasing. Hope to see some of you there. Um, talk to you soon. Peace.